Welcome to SVG TV's news for Saturday, February 20th, 2016. I am Rochelle Batiste with the headlines. Emphasizing that teachers have a very important role to play in society, educator Curtis King uh, says the case involving three of his colleagues' fight for reinstatement uh, to the airports after they were unsuccessful in their attempts to gain political office should not have reached as far as the courts. Earlier this week, High Court uh, Judge Justice Brand Cutter struck out the claim of the three teachers brought against the Public Service Commission and the Attorney General uh, deeming it as entirely hopeless in that the constitution of the country uh, trumps the collective agreement signed in 2010 between the government and the St. Vincent and Grandin's Teachers Union in which it was agreed upon that if a teacher uh, contested a general election once unsuccessful he or she will return to their post or a similar post with all benefits intact. King told SVG TV News yesterday Activists in the past as far back as the riots of the 70s and the roadblock revolution of 2000 has been fighting to be freed from colonial laws which restrict teachers and other public servants from playing a more active role in society. More than that, building up to, to 2005 when we had the signing of that particular collective agreement. That is now referred to as aspirational. We actually had teachers contesting elections and being reinstalled so that what happened in 2005, the teachers and the government side was basically formalizing something that had already started to practice. I think what happened, the understanding was that those on the government side would have gone on to make the necessary adjustment in Parliament to remove the limitation that was, would have been placed on public servants to contest. Don't forget also, coming out of the 2000 disturbances, road, black revolution, what you want to call it, the teachers and other public servants had argued strongly for a social contract and if you look at the social contract that issue of having teachers involved in the political process was a major one King further noted that he was disappointed in the way the judgment turned out against the three teachers and pointed out that those in Parliament could have done more to improve the laws pertaining to civil servants being involved in the political realm so that both the government and the teachers union deliberately set out to create the condition to allow that to happen. And what happened? One side reneged on the um, rule. And hence we have this. So that I would say there's, people can decide what term to call it. What I know, we have a collective agreement which was deliberately arrived at. And I, I, I think as I'm saying, had the government side went ahead because under i think it's article 26 that is not entrenched it allows parliament to make adjustment to the laws governing who should contest elections or who should stand for public office and they didn't have a challenge in parliament Members of the Catholic faith, along with other religious leaders, government officials, and members of the Vincentian public, earlier today witnessed the ordination of the fourth bishop of Kingston, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, Father Gerard County, at the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College campus in Glen. Described as a significant day for the Kingston Diocese, a former bishop of Kingston, Bishop Jason Gordon, in delivering the homily, noted that it is a moment of transformation transformation as the church has been given a permanent bishop as opposed to a visiting bishop noting that father county now becomes a successor to the apostles uh, bishop gordon says the new bishop has come to carry the church's ministry in a time when mercy has become all that is used to filter the gospel he is held not in high stature but he's held now to high service as Christ called his twelve and he set them apart, he called them to be a people whose hearts reflected the heart of Jesus Christ and the heart of Christ is a heart of mercy. 
and you my brother are called to be a bishop in the special jubilee year of mercy what a privilege what an honor what a challenge and what a task lays before you that your episcopal seat will be marked with mercy and will be grounded in mercy is a hope that i have for you as pope francis opened this amazing time for us where mercy becomes all that we use to filter the gospel and to see again this this gospel that has been handed down through the prism of mercy through this experience of mercy through our experiencing mercy from god but us becoming mercy for other people and in this case you becoming mercy for your church noting that without the cross of jesus christ there is no proclamation of the gospel a bishop gordon charged a new bishop to take up the responsibility of the cross that you carry is just a symbol of the cross that you will carry the cross of opening yourself to your people and being vulnerable and being wrong and loving and forgiving Archbishop Harris, when you're taking the oath of fidelity, said that the main virtue for bishop is truth. And truth is a cross that you will have to carry. And if you carry the cross of truth, you will find salvation and lead your people to salvation. And if you do not carry the cross of truth, it will be ruinous to your soul. As you prepare for this moment, that God has called you the words of Peter to you on this day are the words that resonate most deeply in my heart for you that you are a shepherd and accept the shepherding of your people Bishop Gordon further encouraged a new bishop to foster a great commitment to the church as he must stand as a shepherd for all today when you receive your ring you marry this church and a marriage isn't something that will always go nice or oh, you will have your honeymoon as i did but the marriage bed could also be a very difficult time and a very difficult place but through that you too will find the way to bring your heart to christ and configure yourself to everything that god wants of you do not be afraid do not be afraid do not be afraid from your heart as you said on that day when you entered the novitiate of the spirit and order here i am lord send me say yes to christ in everything you do and you will become the shepherd that he wants you to become amen noting that as a religious leader one may be faced with the challenge of addressing sensitive issues in society a bishop gordon while performing the homily at the ordination of the new bishop of kingston diocese stated that he himself was recently posed with such a challenge making a reference to his response to a newspaper article which gave a false impression uh, to the prime minister's position as it pertains to marijuana and marijuana cultivation and was later retracted with an apology issued uh, to the leader by the newspaper Bishop Gordon said that he too must make an apology as well the day I following a newspaper article I spoke on something of sensitivity only to find out that the newspaper article put an apology saying they were wrong in what they said you too you'll find yourself there so as they had to put an apology it's not that what I said I I am was wrong but the context i was given from the newspaper was wrong and so i too have to say sorry for when i speak and i make mistakes so the prime minister since i said this publicly you never said that you wanted to exchange bananas for marijuana <laughs> and i saw that after in the newspaper so sorry <laughs> In other news, Senior Environmental Health Officer Todd Lewis says the Vector Control Unit is making all effort to tackle the Zika virus by focusing on the vector known for spreading it, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Speaking at a stakeholder symposium earlier this week, Lewis said the Vector Control Unit is utilizing three different forms of control in the fight against the mosquito. 
Your control, which speaks to the turning over, the, the storing of your tires, turning over of containers, etc. We have our biological control, which here in St. Vincent, we use the method of fishes, in, this, in the case of the million fishes, to place in the tanks, etc. We have our chemical control, which is our fogging, which is done periodically on a normal basis. Now that we have this threat of Zika in the virus, it's done as a strategic um, intervention, it's done on a daily basis. We have our environmental management, our sensitization and public awareness, GIS and GPS mapping and analysis, which is newly introduced to the unit as of last year, and we have our surveillance. Uh, speaking on the mosquito survival mechanisms, Director of the Pan American Health Organization, uh, Dr. Carissa Etienne, pointed out that fogging cannot be done once in a while but must be serial as mosquitoes tend to increase uh, their egg laying activities uh, during fogging and warn that mosquitoes' eggs can survive out of water for a very long time. If we are going to fog, it has to be serial fogging. It can be fogging once and goodbye and thank you. And if you're fogging, people have to open their doors. And sometimes people close their doors or people are not home, so their homes are closed and you're busy fogging, it's not going to be, to be effective. The, the mosquito needs blood, um, a blood moon to lay its eggs. And the important thing is that eggs can survive for several years out of water. And then, and then when, when it gets the water, it hatches and, uh, and then you have mosquitoes. So that's, that's very important. Um, the four stages of its life cycle, three of them are, 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 are water related. The mosquito has, is well adapted to human habitats. Water storage, waste, white lights, air condition, flowers, bromeliads. It's, it's linked to, to live with, with all of those. Also speaking at the symposium was Minister of Health, Senator Luke Brown, who says his ministry will continue to be proactive in its approach to control the vector and has put measures in place to prevent the spread of the virus if there was to be any reported cases here. I think we understand the particular threat. We, we have a sense of some of the issues involved in responding to this threat. Uh, I, I could say that from the standpoint of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, and you've got some appreciation of this already from the presentations. We've been seeking to be proactive on this. We've already developed, a, we have an action committee in place. We have developed a Zika action plan. We are carrying out the work of community engagement. We carry out the work of vector control. We are hoping that we could actually reduce this risk to the U.S. extent possible. And should we need to respond to a case of Zika in St. Vincent, we put it in place mechanisms that would help us to take care of that kind of response. And head of infectious diseases in Barbados, Dr. Corey Ford, is advocating the need for improved standards at health institutions here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and throughout the region. Uh, Dr. Ford, who was speaking at the launch of the Hand Hygiene Symposium earlier this week, said that infections can be reduced not only if healthcare professionals practice hand hygiene by washing their hands properly, but also ensure that uh, the, the implements and equipment are hygienic. There are people who have infections that are obvious, and then there are people who are colonized. Those are the ones who sometimes are the most dangerous populations because they can spread stuff to people. Go ahead. And this is true. There are many studies which talk about this. A simple, you know, the two simple studies that are spoken about here, one in 2000, and there's several of them. And this is look at VRE, which is vancomycin resistant enterococcus. And it showed that this was being spread, in, it can be spread easily in hospitals from people touching surfaces from hands to hands. So it's not only hand hygiene, but we must also make sure that our decontamination policies in our hospitals across the region are structured and in place. Continue. Lots of people complain often that, you know, the stuff you put in, in the, the hand sanitizer, the soap that irritates your hands, etc. And this is where, uh, uh, the various procurement departments within your hospitals need to make sure that the appropriate uh, solutions are procured according to international standards. Go ahead. 
But Dr. Ford also emphasized the importance for healthcare professionals to keep their nails clipped and free of artificial applications. So fashion can be deadly. And many of you don't think about this, but fashion can be extremely deadly. People love nails. Nails are not a place for your hospital. And every time I talk about this, I love giving a lecture about hand hygiene and talking about nails. Because everybody's hands goes in, all the females' hands go into their pocket. Are they going to their purses? <laughs> Thanks for being a difference here. So your nail tips must be of appropriate length. And really artificial nails, our nail enhances should really not be a part of the hospital setting. Certainly in the intensive care setting. And this has been proven by many, by, 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 by many studies and where the gram negative bacteria, which are sometimes some of the most virulent of organisms we have in terms of resistance nowadays, or carbapetus resistant enterococcus uh, group, uh, sorry, carbapetus resistant enterobacteriaceae family of organisms, um, have, have posed a tremendous problem throughout the world. And we know that love, lots of these organisms love fingernails, areas where they can hide. In other news, a spiritual warfare conference to be held at the Victoria Park next month will seek to break to bring about positive change in the lives of many Vincentians. Apostle Samuel Sells, the team of the Empowerment Conference, is releasing the destiny of the people, and that his team, along with Dr. Cindy Trim, an inspirational minister, wants to reach out to Vincentians so that they can find their true destiny. We are of a chosen generation, and so we're realizing that the destinies of many are really being captured against their will. Um, some, some people's destiny uh, have been arrested because of parental or ancestral involvement in occultism. So there are people who were born captives, and we believe that there are so many potentials in people need to be exposed and this conference is geared towards doing that. It's an empowerment conference that people are going to receive the tools, the strategies, uh, the keys, um, all that they need, the information towards becoming who God destined them to be. Apostle Young sells a conference which will be held over the Easter weekend or will benefit many Vincentians as it will touch on different aspects of life. Truth is always important. Uh, if you hide truth from people, you can keep them in bondage for many years, even generations, decades. And in this conference, uh, we're hoping to draw over 500 people and our goal is to have a registered conference that will bring not just leaders in the church but across the f seven molders of society government education arts entertainment business to a time of empowerment and an impartation in their lives so that they can learn the strategies how to really tap into their potential